because I want to move on to tiling. Now, I haven't actually tried to tile this image, so you can go to mapTiler.org, and there's a free map tiler application that will take your image and cut it into all the appropriate tiles you need. So if you're on Windows, it looks like you can just grab the EXE. If you're on a Mac, you need to download this uh, King Chaos GDAL 1.7 package first. Uh, you won't be needing these packages, the second thing, the Mr. Sid and the ECW. And uh, then you download the Map Tiler application. It might look a little something like this. Okay, so we want Google Maps. Let's do it. Add. So we're going to go into, let's see here. Oh, I know I have it over here as trapezoid.png. Let's check the preview to make sure. 5.5 megabytes. No way that's going to fly on for the phone interface. Okay, so we have our PNG. All right. Sorry, the file you specified does not have georeference. Click on the georeference. Oh, okay. There we go. So we need to give it highest latitude, lowest latitude, highest longitude, lowest longitude. So if we see where I had to place the map, the highest latitude, let's see, 37, that would be this one right here. And then the lowest latitude would obviously uh, be the other one here. And the highest longitude, so which would be the, this, remember they're negative numbers, so it's the opposite of what you might think. And then this one is the smaller of the two. Okay, so we click OK. And we try to continue now. Great. Okay. Uh, so leave the default, the uh, or if it's not WGS84, select WGS84. Um, let's see. Oh, you can click preview. This is this is cool, and it shows you where the tiles will cover, and that looks correct. So if you're not seeing something that looks like your campus, then something's wrong with your numbers. Try again. Okay. So back to uh, back to Map Tyler here. Let's uh, so that's a cool feature. Let's continue. Details about the tile pyramid. So it tries to guess what the right uh, zoom levels are ba based, I imagine, on the size of you know what you've selected. Um, I've this may not be the smartest thing I've ever done, but I've had good luck always bumping the minimum zoom down a little bit, and if I don't know. If I don't know if 21 is even a valid number in Google Maps. It might only go up to 20, I forget. But uh, And bumping the maximum zoom up. Um, you, you can do that or not. I just like to get one extra set of tiles. Okay, uh, let's see here. We want to, to render as a PNG with transparency, and let's go. Okay, so uh, let me go to the desktop, into framework, whoops, let's browse some more, into branches, into UCSF, into maps, into image, and I would like to create a new folder called Parnassus Tiles. So we want all the tiles to go in, a, in its own subdirectory, that'll, that'll probably that'll hopefully become a little obvious why you leave the destination you're alone we don't need to need to publish anyway. so okay uh, we are not using open layers although it is an interesting project and I should probably be doing more with it than I am but uh, to save us some time I'm going to just go to open layers and now we go to continue this is uh, for the generated content it, it creates a, an HTML page for you that we're actually not going to use but yeah, you can put whatever you want in there. And we can start rendering and it will be time consuming. So here we go. All right, rendering the base tiles. And I'm gonna pause the recording because you don't need to watch this. This might take a while. Now map tiler is finished. You can make a donation 
and support the project. So I'm going to exit MapTiler. Here uh, on the left hand side is the output of the MapTiler. As you can see, uh, it, outputted, it uh, put the output in the Parnassus tiles directory as we had requested and that has uh, two files and several subdirectories. It has a Google Maps HTML file, which is a sample implementation of the tiling, which you can look at if, uh, if you are curious. But uh, if you open it up, you'll find that it's using Google Maps version 2. And right now, the current version is version 3. And there are a lot of features in version 3 that we're going to want to use. At least I think so. So uh, bear that in mind. But uh, it also created a tile map resource .xml, which we'll talk about later on. In any event, <clears throat> then there's a bunch of subdirectories that correspond to the zoom level. So zoom level 14 zoomed out quite a bit. Uh, there's a second uh, uh, number that refers to uh, the the uh, x coordinate of the tile, and then the file name is the y coordinate .png. So there's only one tile at zoom level 14. At zoom level 15, there's two tiles. At zoom level 16, we see that there's a total of four tiles, etc. At zoom level 20, there's going to be a lot of tiles. Uh, so, okay, so that's the, that's the layout. So what we've done here now over uh, in the main code area here, so we have the latitude and longitude to center of the map, we have the initial zoom level, and now we have a tile directory. The, uh, the code further down here <coughs> determines uh, what tile to get based on the latitude and longitude. And uh, so here's the calculation. Now, if we go over here and try to load this map, well, the overlay didn't work. Uh, if you look in the Apache error log on the web server, we'll see that it's requesting a bunch of tiles that don't exist. Uh, you know, all of these, uh, you know, Parnassus tiles slash number slash number slash number dot PNG uh, don't exist. So we change the calculation of coordinate y <clears throat> to what I've just pasted in there. Uh, don't worry too much about copying this because we're actually going to get rid of it later on, but I just want this to work now. Now, I haven't tried this, so this will work when I reload. No. All right. Problem is a typo right here. It's not Paranassus, it's Parnassus. All right, let's try again. There we go. That's better. Okay. So now what you can see is happening here is it only, this is downloads tiles and lines up pretty nicely. And it didn't download super detailed tiles, so it downloaded pretty quickly. It just downloaded these tiles that are scaled just right for what I want to do. If I zoom in, it downloads new tiles. And it gets more and more detail as I zoom more and more. So there you go. And you see it loads the tiles as needed when I scroll. Okay, so, so what's happening here is that when you scroll the map, you're still getting 404 not founds. And that's because we only did a tile for the area that we needed. We want to create a transparent PNG that we go to whenever um, whenever we uh, get a tile that we don't have. So it's transparent.png and uh, you can make it empty, you can make it one pixel by one pixel, you can even make it 256 pixels by 256 pixels and transparent, that'll be a little bigger than, than you need though. Okay, so we have this HT access file in our tiles directory that instructs the web server that anytime a file or directory is not found and the URI resembles digits slash digits slash digits dot PNG, then we should just serve up the transparent PNG. So it behooves you to make that transparent PNG as small as you can because it may be served up a lot. Okay, so now when we pull up 
the map, we get we only load tiles as we need them. And we can zoom in for a lot of detail. Doesn't get blurry or anything. And as we scroll off the map, everything's A-OK. -okay. We scroll out of the tiled area. OK, so there are still some things that we can do, though, to make this better. One thing we can do is we should really, really uh, get rid of this ugly ugliness right here. This, you know, we shouldn't make the JavaScript. We shouldn't make the JavaScript do a calculation every single time. That's that should be unnecessary. So we've written a script to move all the PNG files to the correct place, so we can take that out. Okay, so here is a simple shell script that will uh, move your tiles to the correct location. What you have to do, you do have to make sure you're in the, you're in the, uh, in the Parnassus tiles or Mission Bay tiles or whatever campus name underbar tiles directory before running it. So let's run it really fast here. Let's, uh, I called it move. Uh, well, anyway, I need to go into, I just said, I need to go into the correct directory. So in my case, if I can type, uh, we're looking at part, uh, no, we're looking at image Parnassus tiles. Okay, here we go. So <clears throat> here we go. I need to run move tiles. And it may take a little while because there's a lot of tiles it needs to move. Okay, I'm going to go here where the JavaScript was and I'm just going to change it to simply coord.y so that these little tiny phones don't have to do all that calculating. Especially when you zoom in a lot, there can be a lot of tiles. Okay, so it's done. So now if I reload, it should still work. It does. Excellent, excellent. I zoom in and everything's fine. Great, great, great. So something else that happens is once you zoom out far enough where the overlay is making sense, so here it kind of makes sense, you can still see it. You zoom out a little bit, a little bit more, come on. It disappears because at this point it would just be you know, meaningless, it would just be a blob on the map. So that's a, that's a kind of a nice feature too, I think. Um, let's see in this bottom window here exactly how much our how much our uh, images take up. All told it's 23 megabytes and we're going to run it through PNGNQ to compress the tiles. Um, strip out, quantize them, strip out things that aren't necessary. So uh, let's see, that's going to be, so we're in the tiles directory, we're going to find dot dash name and grab all the PNG files under here and we're going to do a dash exec PNG NQ dash N256. Okay, so 256 is the number of colors that the image is to contain and uh, it's actually, that's actually the default and uh, that's should be plenty of colors for an image like what we have. So let's uh, let's do it. It's going to rename them all, uh, which is which is fine because when we're done, we're going to run through PNG Crush and rename them back. So let's run this command here: find dot dash name start up PNG exec PNG. Yeah, you can see on the screen. So this is going to take a while. So I'm going to stop recording, and when it's done, I'll start recording again, and we'll see how much space we've saved. Okay, so we had 23 megabytes of PNGs before. And so now we have 38, but that's because we created new PNGs along new uh, quantized compressed PNGs alongside the old PNGs. So that's going to be uh, 23 minus 38. So we went from 23 megabytes to 15 megabytes. That's pretty good. 